Hi, and welcome to my poster pitch video about ontologies in the computational material sciences. With the increasing amount of data in the computational material sciences, new ways to store and annotate data are necessary to ensure fulfilling the FAIR principles. Ontologies do provide a solution for that, and they also enable semantically linking different domains. On this poster, I'm presenting to you three ontologies that we've developed for the computational material sciences. The first is the NOMAD Meta Info. The NOMAD Meta Info was so far a metadata scheme annotating data in the largest database for computational material sciences, the NOMAD Archive. The NOMAD Archive stores data in a normalized form, independent of the source where it comes from. The NOMAD Meta Info structures these data. There are currently four types of metadata, and these are the concrete values, the labels to the actual values, then the sections, the different parts of a calculation, the abstract types, which are actually metadata for the metadata, and the dimensions, classifying some concrete values as dimensions. We have converted that to the ontology format OWL, and here on this graph I show you which terms belong to the input and which belong to the output of a calculation, and I also show you what I mean with these four different types of metadata. There are also a number of relations between data in the NOMAD Meta Info that are also shown in this graph here, and which is why it can be understood, in fact, as a simple ontology. Now we want to connect the NOMAD Meta Info to more semantic ontologies. First, I have created the NOMAD Structure Ontology because we need to find a way to semantically represent crystals. The Structure Ontology, ontology can then be instantiated with data, for example, from the AFLOW library of crystallographic prototypes. This knowledge graph can then be queried using, for example, the ontology query language Sparkle, and this can then be visualized as a network, which you see, for example, here, where I show you the prototypes as blue bubbles and the corresponding crystal systems as red bubbles. This is also size scaled by the number of atoms, so you get a very quick overview of what type of prototypes are in this library. Then what we are actually interested in are the materials properties. So we use the structure ontology as a base to connect it with materials properties. There are different types of properties, for example, scalar properties like the total energy of a system, but also non-scalar um, properties like the stress, which is a tensor, but also the band structure, which is even more complex and is related to a number of different properties different electrical but also optical properties, but even itself. I show you in this graph here how the band structure is connected with the band gap and how the band gap is then used as a classification for the electrical conductivity of a material. Now we want to connect these three ontologies and I show you how this can be used uh, as an application to search for a better solar cell material. Let's assume we have a data set and we want to find all materials on this data set that have a band gap of larger than one electron volt. According to the shockley quasar criterion, the maximum efficiency of a solar cell is at a band gap of 1.3 electron volt. So we first need to find the relevant terms in the ontologies to know that what are the terms that we want to query for. Once we have done that, we can choose a data set and download it from the NOMAD archive and instantiate the NOMAD meta info ontology with it. Then in the third step and fourth step, we combine two queries or two filters in one Sparkle query. The first is the filter on the band gap, and this already reduces the number of unique chemical compositions by a factor of 10. And then the second filter is for non-toxicity. We do that by querying the external database Wikidata, so the ontology that 
takes data from the Wikipedia and we filter out all uh, materials containing elements that cause some intoxicating effect. This is still a very simple query, but you can, in a fifth step, add more materials, add more materials properties to it, and of course extend the dataset as well. And it would probably even be very helpful to extend it to experimental ontologies, because one very important property is also the synthesizability. I hope I could arouse your interest about ontologies in material science, and I'm very happy to tell you more about it at the conference.